Okay. Uh, sorry for changing the time. Last uh, time we had a with another group, but I will keep on changing the time. People, I want you to, if I change time, I want you to respond based on your suitability. Does it suit you? It doesn't suit you. Does it suit you? It doesn't suit you. Which means I can be able to spread it out so that it can be suitable for everyone. Even if I have to shift it maybe from Tuesday, maybe Thursday. Anyhow, as long as it's going to work out for you. Okay, now, I want us to continue with where we left off. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to analyze the subject in terms of voltage divider rule and current divider rule. I know you're familiar with Homsu. So it means when you do it with Ohm's law, it becomes much easier because you can be able to find the value of the resistor, you can be able to find the value of the voltage, you can be able to find the value of the current. That is when you look at it in Ohm's law. Because you know that in Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. That one is more of a straightforward Mutation. But now, if you were given a circuit like what we did yesterday, then it says to you find the voltage or find the voltage drop across a certain component. Now, based on your circuit network, you will have to be able to understand how do I break it down so that I can be able to get to where you are looking for that voltage. Do you still have the circuit of your circuit? Did you attend last week? Yeah. You attended last week? Or when did you attend last week? Ma'am? First time. In here? Second time. Were you there last week? Yes. Do you still have that second one last week? What? I drew it on the board. You didn't draw it down. Can I just pause this and go and fetch the second so that I can work with the second of last week? It's the second of Tuesday or No, no, the one of Tuesday. No, no, when I am holding the one of Wednesday. Okay. I will, I will use the one of Tuesday. Let me use the one of Tuesday. Let me just... Okay. Let's work according to the one of Tuesday. And let's see. Now, this was the second one. But it's going differ from the one of Wednesday. Okay, you have a resistor. In that case, you have a resistor. This was one K ohm, and also one kilo ohm. Then you have another resistor here, of which it was 10 kilo ohm. Then you have another resistor. It was seven comma seven kilo ohm. Then this is four comma seven kilo ohm. Four comma seven. Then we had a bit of sauce. Uh, 
of the day. Now, if your current is any judge from the positive side, you can use a different color so that you can see it if you want to So you have any judge from the positive side of the day. Now, when the current has been energized, which means it's going to move through the conducting wire. Now, when it's moving through the conducting wire, now it is going to come across conditions that is going to exist. Now, those conditions are the conditions that are going to define to you which network are you working with. We understand each other. Now, the first condition is the condition of a junction. The first condition is the condition of a junction. Now, if you look at the magnitude at which your current it is flowing, that is the current which is energized by the source. Now, I would like to go and define it by definition, which means I give it a reference that this current comes from the source. Now, the current that comes from the source, you can see that is my I total. Now, if I define this as I total, if I define this as I total, which means I'm going to say now the current is going to flow from or is going to be energized from the source through the conducting wire. While it's busy flowing, then it comes across a node which is a, a junction. Now, once it sees the junction, then it knows that now I need to apply the kitch of current law. I need to apply the kitch of current law. The current entering the junction is equal to the sum of the current leaving the junction. Which means from this junction, then it goes and says how many nodes are connected in that junction. Nodes in terms of the wires. How many wires are connected in the junction. Now in this condition or in this situation, we will see that we only have two, which means you have one going in that direction and also the other one going in that direction, which means you go to split twice. When you split twice, you will have I1 going in that direction and you will have I2 going in that direction. We understand each other. Now, if I write this in terms of interpreting the current rule of Kitchen, then I know that the sum of the current, so the current entering the junction, which is your I1, which is also your I total, will be given by the sum of the current leaving the junction. Which current is leaving the junction? You will see that I1 plus I2, it is leaving the junction. You understand the junction? Now, this becomes a partial definition to what type of a circuit are you working with? Which means I cannot go and conclude that the nature of the circuit that is created by these it is in need of a parallel. Which means this statement must be able to reverse. And when this statement reverses, when this statement reverses, it reverses in a manner whereby now the sum of the current leaving the junction. So now the sum of the current that was leaving the junction, it has changed its state. Now it is entering the junction. If the sun enters the junction, it's equal to the current leaving the junction. Then we can go and conclude that indeed that is a parallel network. Now, once you get that parallel network, then you can say the voltage remains the same. Do we understand each other? Now, in this condition, then we will say we will have to check how is this being achieved at the end. Then we will look at the continuation. Now, if you look at the continuation of I1, I1 is going to continue flowing into 1K without any splitting or without any junction. Then continues to flow into 1K again without any splitting or interaction or without any junction. Now, you will see that whatever value that you saw here of I1, also it is going to be the same value of I1 there. Do we understand each other? Which means that current it didn't come across a condition whereby it was interrupted. Then the continuation of this also, when you look at this and that part, also it is still. I want. Now, if this definition exists, can you see that now on one conducting wire, 
you have got multiples of components which are connected there, whereby the current remains the same. You understand each other? Now, it gives us a conclusive decision that if I have got multiples of components which are connected in one conducting wire where the current remains the same, which means that connection there on that conducting, so on that conducting wire, it is what? It is of a series connection. Do we understand each other? Then we can drive or we can draw the conclusion that whatever that exists, if we want to find a minimum of components as an equivalent, then we will say your R series 1 will be given by your 1K plus your 1K. Now, what does it mean? It simply means that this component, that component, setting it up is going to give you, is going to give you a 2 kilo ohm resistor. Now, instead of having multiples of these with the simplification, then we know that we only have one equivalent. We understand each other. Now, the continuation of this current, then you will see that when it gets to this node, what does it see? It sees a, a junction. You understand each other? What is seeing a junction? You see that I1, now it is seeing a junction. When I1 sees a junction, it knows that I need to split. When it splits, it's going to split what? It's going to split in this direction, and also it is going to split in that direction. We understand each other. Which means when it splits in this direction, that direction, then I can say that is my I3, and that is my I4. You understand each other? My I3 and my I4. Now, you will see that here you have got I1, whereby you have got the sum of current leaving the junction. You have got the sum of current leaving the junction, which means your I1 is defined by your I3 plus your I4. Your I1 is defined by your I3 plus your I4, which means this condition has existed again internally based on this situation here. But these are things, they are not the same because the currents, they are different. You understand each other? It's only a certain portion that can exist, but not the entire thing. Now, then you can say, if these exist, the continuation of I3 before the component and after the component is still see I3. You understand each other? Before the component and after the component is still see I3. Am I making myself clear? Now, if you see the condition at which I3, uh, sorry, I4, at which you see I3 and I4, you will see that I3 and I4 it is connected back to what? It is connected back to the negative side. Do we understand each other? Which means it doesn't matter how it has been stipulated, it doesn't matter how it goes. At the end of the day, it, is, it needs to go back to what? It needs to go back to the negative side. Do we understand each other? Which means automatically, after this component here, the two are going to do what? Are going to recombine again. Do we understand each other? When the two recombines again, which means now I'm going to say I have got my I3 plus my I4 because both of them, they are connected to what? They are connected back to the negative side. Do you understand each other? Now, because they are connected back to the negative side, this is the same as what? This is the same as my I1. Do you understand each other? Now, if this condition exists, have we seen this condition before? Yes, the condition existed. Where did it exist? It existed before. If that condition existed before, therefore, we can go and say whatever network which is created by these, it is of a parallel network. Do you understand each other? If it is of a parallel network, the voltage remains the same. Am I making myself clear? Now, if the voltage remains the same, 
Then I will going to say, how should I do manipulation of parallel network? Then I will say, R parallel as a condition, R parallel 1 will be given by. Now you look at your magnitude. Now your magnitude is going to be 10 kilo ohm multiplied by 4.7 kilo ohm divided by 10 kilo ohm plus 4.7. Your I5 plus your I6, they are 
entering the junction. And when they are entering the junction, that is how they left the junction, which means you are going to have a conclusive decision that, that is equal to your IT. Now, the combination of these two, because they are existing, then the type of network which is created by these, it is of what? It is of a parallel network. Then you are going to say, now I have got a parallel network, which is R parallel 2. Now, with your I parallel 2, what about with your I parallel 2, which means you are going to have 1K, multiplied by 1K, divided by 1K plus 1K. Of which this will give you what? Eh? One? One kilo? Five hundred oh. Five hundred oh. And it's zero point five kilo. Zero point five kilo. Five hundred oh. Okay. Now, once you get these, then you can say, oh, I have got these. What? Aspire to this. What really happened with respect to this? This was created as a network based on what? Based on a condition whereby I5 plus I6 existed. We understand each other. Of which your I5 plus your I6, we know that it is a current which is the sum leaving and entering. But based on what? But based on your IT. Which means the continuation that you find here it is the continuation. Now it is leaving the junction. What is leaving the junction? You will see that that is your IT. Now, if you look at after this, also that is your IT. But now it is your I2 based on what? You will see that it is your I2 based on the negative side of the baby. Now already on the negative side of the paper, what do you have? You have got I1, which means this current is going to be added to that current, which means you're going to say plus your I2. Can you see that these two now they have reconnect? Do you understand each other? When these two reconnect, this is equal to your I total. Now, oh sorry, now I want us to trace the reconnection of these. Now, you will see that you have a condition of this one and that one, which is your I2. Now, if I look at these steps that I have created, I have created this so that I can be able to manipulate whatever second that I have given to make it easy for myself. Now, if I manipulate the second that I am given to make it easy for myself, then I am going to say, ah, I had R service one, which is I1. You understand? Me? I service one, which is I1. But where does it come from? It comes from the source. You understand the challenge? Then I will then say, if I manipulate this, I'm going to manipulate this in this manner. I have the source, which is the battery, the positive, and the negative. Then I will have a current, which is my I total. You understand the challenge? Of which this was moving through a conducting wire. But while it was moving through a connecting wire, it came across a junction. You understand each other? It came across a junction. Just this now, what did you see on that junction? I total. What did you see on that junction? You will see that I total saw on the junction a splitting. Of which on that junction a splitting, it was a splitting of what? It was a splitting of here's been here. Yeah. It was a splitting of I1 and also it was a splitting of I2. We understand each other. It was a splitting of I1 and also it was a splitting of I2. Because from the source there was a splitting I1 and I2. Now through the continuation. What happened when I1 splitted? What happened when I1 splitted? 
you will see that when I was treated, it came across multiples of components. You understand each other? Your multiples of components was created by what? Your multiples of components it is created by the series there that I created, which is the equivalent series of what? An equivalent series of two kilo ohm. Now, inside this two kilo ohm, this is an equivalent. But inside this two kilo ohm, we have got what? We have got two one kilo ohm. You understand each other? We have got two one kilo ohm. Now, after this two kilo ohm, what happened? After this two kilo ohm, what happened? We came across a condition whereby this remember the same as what? We came across a condition whereby I1 was split to I3 plus I4. You understand each other? I1 was split to I3 and I4, which means that network went and created what? Went and create an equivalent. Can you see? Which means here also I have an equivalent of which now my equivalent is what? It is 3, 2 kilo ohm. And we know that this 3, 2 kilo ohm it is created by what? It is created by a 10 kilo ohm resistor which is in parallel to a 4,7 kilo ohm resistor. We understand each other. But the combination, because we said it's a parallel, how it has split, that is how it has given rejoin. We understand each other. Now, after this, after this, which means here I see one, sorry, I one, and also here I see what? I see I one. But inside here, it is what? It is I1, sorry, I3 and I4. You understand each other? Now, if I do the continuation of this, you will see that now when after this condition is okay, where does I1 end up? You will see that I1 it is going to end up dead to the source. You understand each other? Then that is your I1. What happened to the I2? What happened to the I2? You will see that I2 had to flow through a resistor which was what? Which is your what? Through a resistor which is your 3, 3 kilo ohm. Why it is flowing through a resistor which is a 3, 3 kilo ohm? What happened? Then you will see that I2 was split. I2 was split to what? I4 and so I5 and I6. And then I5 and I6 again came and rejoined to form I2, which means it left what? It left a equivalent resistor. Your equivalent resistor was what? It was your 500 ohm resistor. Now, what's this two? After it is split, then it came and recombined so that it can be I2 again. When it recombined, after it left that component, again there was another component of which that component still I2 was flowing. Now because we have got I2 here, and we have got I2 there, and we have got I2 there, which means this voltage and so this current and that current and that current they are the same. Flowing continuously. It leaves this component, that component, and that component to be series to each other. Do we understand each other that one? Then your I2 have to go and rejoin with your I1 so that it can go back to your negative side of the page. Now, can you see that now according to the definition of this circuit, then I can say this condition and that condition, they are what? They are parallel to each other. Now, if these and these are parallel to each other, what does it mean? The voltage is the same. The voltage is the same. Which means the voltage that I measure across this one 
and the voltage that I measure across this one, it is going to be what? It is going to be 5 volts. Do we understand each other? Now, if I do the continuation of the analysis of this, I want you to bear with me on this one. If I do the continuation of the analysis of this, then I can go and say, if I look at my circuit, if I look at my circuit, on my circuit, I will have the 5 volts, of which that 5 volt, there is this resistor there, and also that resistor there. There is that resistor, that resistor, and also that resistor there. Now, this is a closed loop. Remember, we work up into a closed loop, positive, negative, which means the voltage that I measure here it is 5 volts. The voltage that I measure there also is 5 volts. Do we understand each other? If the voltage that I measure here is 5 volts, then also the voltage that I measure here it is 5 volts. Now, do you agree with me that this one on its own? Can you see this method? On its own, it consists of what? It consists of that equivalent there and also that equivalent there. And these two equivalents, they are of 5 volts, which is your 2 kilo ohm and also your 3, 2 kilo ohm. Which means this voltage, this one, it is for both of these. Now, if this voltage is for both of these, which means when the current flows continuously, when the current flow, flow continuously, then I can go and say the voltage that I measure here and the voltage that I measure here, they must give me that voltage there. Do you understand that part? Now, according to Kitchen, voltage, it says the sum of voltages across your circuit connection continuously as a closed loop must be equal to what? Must be equal to your supply. Which means if I say this is my V1 and that is my V2, then I'm going to say V supply is equal to V1 plus V2. V1 plus V2 is equal to your supply voltage. We know what is your supply voltage. Your supply voltage is what? It is 5 volts. You understand each other. But can I find V1? Is it possible for me to find V1? Yes, it is possible because now here I am working with Kirchhoff voltage rule. You understand each other? I am working with Kirchhoff voltage rule. What does Kirchhoff voltage rule mean? Entails. You will see that the Kirchhoff voltage rule says that the voltage across the component, the voltage across the component, what is your component? It is your V1. Then I will say V1 will be given by the supply voltage, which is your 5 volts, multiplied by the ratio of the components that are connected in that closed loop. What is the ratio of that component which are connected to your closed loop? Now, the ratio, it simply means that in a fractional form, it is going to be the resistor or the resistance which is existing within the measurement point. What is your measurement point? It is your V1. Then it is going to be your two Kilo ohm, am I making myself clear? Your 2 kilo ohm divide by what? Divide by the sum of your resistance in that circuit, which means it is going to be your 2 kilo ohm plus your 3,2 kilo ohm. Now, 
in this case, that is your 5 multiplied by 2k divided by 2k plus 3,2k. Then you get your voltage. Now let me show you the one comma nine. So to use here, we have got one comma nine volts. One comma nine volts. Now, your view one it is what? It is nine one comma nine volt plus V2. What is V2? You will see that now V2 According to the mathematical analysis that you can do here, it is going to be what? It is going to be a three comma one volt. Did you understand that algorithm? So which means going forward, it's going to be easier for you to manipulate this, isn't it? Okay. Now, if I say to you. Because we have managed to achieve this, we have managed to achieve this, then I say to you, your second connection, it is a second connection that consists of what we call a super voltage. It is a second that consists of what we call a super position. Now, with a super position, it simply means that you have got a DC reference point where your AC will be able to alternate. You have got a DC reference point where your AC will be able to alternate. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, if I say to you, in this condition, if I say to you in this condition, what will be your maximum AC voltage or your maximum input signal that will exist within a parameter of your 500 ohm? Of your 500 ohm resistor, which means V. Of 500. I want you to give me the input maximum, or sorry, the output voltage minimum and the maximum oscillating on your 500 ohm resistor. Now, because I need to superimpose or to superimpose this, now my superimpose it is going to work in this manner. My superimpose it is going to work. In this manner, which means I need to go and look at this voltage. How do I get this voltage? How do I get this voltage? I know that this circuit it is of a parallel circuit, which means the two they are what the two they share the same voltage. You understand each other? The two they share the same voltage, which means here and there. I am seeing what? I am seeing 5 volts. You understand the chart? Now, if I redraw the circuit, if I redraw the circuit, I will redraw the circuit to an extent whereby I have got 5 volts connected to your resistor equivalent and your resistor. Which means here I have got. 3,3 kilo ohm. I have got 500 ohm. I have got oh, 2,2 2, 2, 2 kilo ohm. Now we know that if your network it is in this manner, if your network it is in this manner, the current here. The current there, the current there, the current there going back is what? It is the same. 
the voltage becomes the sign, which means this is a voltage divider circuit. You understand each other? Now, I will have to go and find the voltage there. But which voltage am I finding there? We need to go and check at which network am I working with. You will see that according to your second design, your second design consists of two sources. It consists of a negative sort of a DC source, and then again it consists of an AC source. But if I am doing the analysis, which source must I continue? First, it says do your DC reference. Do you understand, Richard? Do your DC reference. If you do your DC reference, it simply means that you will go and short circuit your AC. Am I making myself clear? If you do your mathematical analysis, you will go and short circuit your AC. If you short circuit your AC, which means your circuit is not going to see the AC, but it's going to see the DC. So that you can know what is your reference point. What is your reference point? Now, in this manner, your reference point will be your V, DC, of 500, which is given by what? In this condition, because it is of a service network, in this condition, because it's of a service network, it is going to be what? It is going to be your voltage of the supply, which is this supply, multiplied by the ratio of the component which is, or the component where your voltage needs to be determined, which is what? Which is your 500 ohm. Divide by what? Divide by 2200 plus 20,300. Now, what is this supply? It is 5 ohm. Multiply by 500 divided by 2200 plus 3000. 300. Now, if you manipulate this, what are you going to find? What will be the DC voltage according to that resistor there? Sorry. Oh, plus the 500. Sorry. Um, oh, yes, plus the 500. I know the sum. It's how many? 1, 2, plus the 500. Sorry? Plus the 500. That was the question. Yeah. Eh? Zero for two volts. Which means here it is zero comma four two volts. Now we need to find the maximum peak voltage and the minimum peak voltage. The maximum peak voltage and the minimum peak voltage. Now, for you to find the maximum and the minimum, then you will say, ah, this is my AC source. This is my AC source. Now, from the origin, it was from zero all the way to maximum, back to zero all the way to minimum, back to zero, which means that is your full cycle. Now, if that is your full cycle, if that is your full cycle, then I'm going to say ah. What is mu now? What is mu now? You will see that what is mu, it is based on what? It is based on your DC point. We are no longer working with the DC reference of zero, but we are working with the DC reference of what? Zero comma four. You understand each other? Which means your graph, or which means your AC source, 
it is going to shift from zero by a margin of what? Zero comma four. You understand each other? How is it shifting? Is it shifting upwards or is it shifting downwards? You will see that it is shifting upwards. You understand each other? If it is shifting upwards, we no longer have this magnitude, but we have got a new magnitude. But the new magnitude it is what? It is zero comma four two. We understand each other. It is zero comma four two, which means now your graph starts there. Now, if your graph starts here, which means it is going to shift by that motion there. Now, when it shifts in that motion, these size is not going to change. You understand each other? The size of the graph is not going to change. But the point of your turning maximum and minimum are going to change because you are shifting. Now, when you shift, which means now your graph starts here, then it goes up there, then back to zero, then it turns down here, then it goes there. You understand each other? Which means here. It is minus zero comma four two. There is plus zero comma four two. You see that now your position. From the maximum side has been added by what? Has been added by plus 0, 0,42. At the minimum has been subtracted by 0, 0,42. Which means if the value it is determined, if the value it is determined, you will see that here, here will be. V, D, C, which is your reference voltage plus your V, P, which is this one here. Then it's going to give you your V, max. Here will be your V, D, C, minus your V, P, which is going to give you your V, That it is your super position. You have got 
V of AC as RMS as P and as RH. You understand all? And then again as P. Your condition, your condition, if it is in RMS, if it is in B, if it is in average, if it is in B to B. When you want to find the minimum and the maximum voltage that exists within a certain component, all these voltages must be converted to peak, which means it must be VP. Because for the formula, it says VDC, the voltage of the direct current voltage across the component plus or minus the peak voltage of the AC or your sinusoidal waveform is equal to maximum or minimum. So whatever condition that you are given there, you must be able to convert it to peak voltage. If you are given it to you as in, as in RMS, you must take that AC RMS value and convert it to P. If you are given it in P, you must take that P value and convert it to P. If you are given as average, you must convert it from average to P. If you are given in P to P, you must convert P to P to P. Your AC always it must be in P then you will be able to find the magnitude of your input, sorry, your maximum or your minimum. That is your superior position. Your super position. Super position. Is there only one? Everything open the nose. Ah. Uh, if I recall, you are an extension. Yeah, it's an extension. Oh, it's an extension. Then what? I'm going to go. I'm going to Friday, next week, Scrooge. You are right. And that one is a CT cluster. Now, this one is my name. The next week. So that's why I want to wrap up this today. Next week, I start with diet, semiconductor devices, with the diet. Because I want to check 2.1, but we have to summarize 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and That's only a of those So I, I think the first one is 2.1 in the introduction. The second one needs to be the conductivity of the diode. The third one needs to be a input diode limiter, diode clamper, clamper circuit. I hope it is not a huge because there is clamper and clamper circuit. There is. Can you see what we are doing now? Can you see what we are doing now? We get to a condition whereby that's part of the position. Exist in terms of it's either a sheet, the, the, the graph of that, or a sheet, the graph, the graph of that, depending on how is the connection of the diode in the circuit. Forward by the diode, the diode is going to be forward by us. Forward by us is going by I'll just have to go and check it. Where are you? On chapter 2. It's there. Have you opened 
if things get worse, then it goes to the end of the sacrifice. Now, your test, I'm not going to set your test. I don't set it. I used to, but I don't. The only way to get is the one that deals with your test. So, the message there is you take from these reports. If you see, it's written from these reports. That is your own. Now, I am trying at all means. In a nature of fact, I'm supposed to sit in my office, the new place here, which is the question I can see. You leave. I spend two hours on campus, then I leave. But I said, no. Uh, it's not going to work out. Let me try to create a class where I can sit and discuss the issue. I will teach whatever I need to be teach that I need, and it's very important. If you are not for you, then I just say, pass. For you to understand, because you need this in the history school. If you still want to go to history school or any other subject going forward, especially because of the uh, truth part. Now, uh, this, this, as I was already explaining, it is not, it's not going to be held against you. Even if you don't come, it's not going to be held against you. No, no, no. But, it should be for your own good. If you want to come and understand, you can come. If you don't want to come, still it is okay. Can I make myself clear? You can see on the group you are about 89. But sitting here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Which means whatever is sitting at home does understand. Even if you put the question in the group, I am going to answer. Because I need to answer. So I have created two platforms. One is the face to face platform, two is the group platform. Now, with the group platform, you put a question, I answer you. Or you put privately, still, I answer you because that number I have assigned it for you guys to be able to communicate with me. We understand each other. But even though you ask me privately, I will answer you privately, but still I have to put it on group so that everyone can be able to see. Because not all of you guys, I think some of you guys think you already do a bait. <laughs> yes, I know. Because there's gonna be one, one thing I can promise you. After test one, we're going to shift the video. After test one, we're going to shift the video. You will tell me what you say, you say it that day. After test two, we'll shift the video. So it's going to be more of you trying to participate in the After you are passed. Okay. Uh, today.